Dmitry Alexandrovich, there are a lot of questions about the hub motor. In the first years of the project development, a lot was said about it. Some individuals even promised certain actions. But what is the current situation with this issue? What tasks are being carried out? And are they being carried out at all? Basically, we are doing and will complete what has been promised. Because no one is going to abandon these plans. However, we have repeatedly discussed this issue with you. There are top priority tasks, there are second priority ones, and so on. Because the demand for hub motors, in any case the volume of the expected sales, depending on the market capacity, are more or less clear. But they are significantly lower than the volumes expected for general purpose industrial motors. This is the first point. Second, the equipment for the production of general purpose industrial electric machines is well represented on the market of the equipment intended for the production of electric machines. Because a lot of plants produce these machines, consequently there is equipment and machine tools made for this. A hub motor is a specific product, quite specific. And to produce it, you need slightly different equipment. Let's take for example the Zeta team. They started with our hub motors. Then, they tried to make their own hub motors. Even to make their own diagrams, that's not the point. But they tried to create the equipment for winding hub motors. As a result, their groove filling density leaves much to be desired, and the money has been spent. So it doesn't lead to any good technical results. Well, the technical results only to the deterioration of the technical result, obviously. Therefore, now they are forced to consider a version of Zeta with a central front axle drive, and in the future, two hub motors on the rear axle. They did not give up on the project, but they faced the same problems that we had warned them about. These tasks can be solved head on, and despite the support of the Ministry of Industry and Trade, support of the President, and so on, this issue remains open, specifically concerning the winding. But there are other problems. We have also spoken with the general designer of Rusalprom, and they have the same problem too. The motor costs 35,000 rubles, the encoder for it 35,000 rubles. When we were making a pilot batch of tractor motors, the donor motor for it cost 7.5 thousand rubles and the encoder 7.5 thousand rubles. In other words, basically the price of the encoder is comparable to the size of the entire motor, although they have different sizes. Right, this is China's policy. Why? Because they produce it. And now mechatronics and robotics are highly dependent on this. Yes, there are encoders for ABS cars and so on, but they have their own peculiarities. They rock white chip Chinese external encoders. But they do not enable you to get the proper degree of motor protection from environmental factors. To make sure our audience understand this, our encoders use the interaction motors only. What is it and what it is necessary for? No, they are also used in other control drives. They are used to determine the rotation of the motor, which side it rotates, how it rotates, and so on. And it provides the control signals for the controller. In other words, it is virtually impossible to control the controller without it. Right. It determines the rotation speed, mod rotation frequency, and the direction. And there is this thing behind the sensor. There are Hall effect sensors that determine positioning, and there is a signal source. There are different encoder versions. There are tooth gears, and all sorts of other options. But everything is linked to the conditions in which a motor is operated. This is the first point. The second is how reliable it should be. This is the second point. And the third one is a production cost. Of course, when China offers us such prices, we must take measures. Plus, for example, if the encounters we need were presented on the market by different companies, I think the price for them would nosedive. Now imagine what it would be like 
to get dependent on China. We already know the consequences. You must remember there were difficulties with purchasing the equipment when the prices soared. We remember it perfectly. To repeat such a thing will be similar to a joke. Only a pale face can fall in the same trap three times in a row. We can't. Therefore, if we want to have products and guarantee their presence on the market and not to be pulled like puppets back and forth, we must also have the technology of manufacturing these sensors, incremental encoders, in addition to the winding technology. Those that will enable the motor to have a sufficient degree of protection. Therefore, they might say that we have shown, demonstrated it. Yes, we have demonstrated it. The demo samples that had optical encoders. Something that could be made quickly. Well, conveniently. But we have faced a problem because this optical encoder is implemented very well for size 318 hub motors problematic for size 186 and can't be applied for a smaller size. And all the other encoders, external and so on, reduce the reliability drastically.